Good morning and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Wednesday the 8th of December. Uh, this morning I'd like to, to talk to you about something that I, I participated or shared in on Sunday afternoon in Provost. Um, the funeral home there had a beautiful um, sort of a holiday remembrance, uh, remembering all those that they had helped the families deal with the death of a loved one throughout the past year. And they gathered people together so they could remember and honor those who had died to light a candle and to have a bit of remembrance for them. And the funeral home director spoke about grief and the importance of acknowledging it. And one of the things he said was, it's important to let grief have a seat at the table. And I think that's really important, especially right now as we're sort of, we're into Advent, we're well into Advent. Um, we're sort of halfway through the week, or the second week of Advent. So we're really pretty much halfway there. And as we, as we approach Christmas, there is this incredibly overwhelming sense that we need to make Christmas joyful and and wild and it's the best gotta be the best ever. And we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to do that. And the reality is that Christmas, because of that very pressure, can often be a very difficult time for, for a lot of people to deal with. It can be a difficult time because they have lost loved ones or lost a job at the season that calls upon us to spend the most money. For people who are, are worried about being about having housing, um, Christmas at the coldest time of the year for some is a very difficult and, and rem time and a reminder um, that in a time when we really emphasize joyous and joy and abundance, for a lot of people there is a lot of despair and lack of abundance. If this were normal times, and in previous churches I have done this, um, when we could gather and break bread together and and celebrate face to face and hug one another and wipe each other's tears, I would probably toward the end of Advent, just before Christmas, around about the winter solstice, host a blue Christmas service. Um, a service uh, of, it is a service of, of gentle celebration, but it's a service of acknowledgement of the more difficult aspects. And it isn't simply meant to be, a, a, for me anyway, I never did mean it to be simply a service for those who have lost loved ones in the past year or who are facing their first Christmas without someone. Um, but it was meant for anybody who finds Christmas to be a difficult time. There are lots of people who don't get time off for Christmas because they're working, police, military, um, you know, doctors and nurses, uh, taxi drivers, priests, lots of people who for this, for Christmas, when everybody else gets their leave or has some time off to spend with family, this can actually be the busiest time of year for them. And that isn't always acknowledged. Um, for people who have lost their jobs or who are feeling have broken up in relationships, Christmas can be a very difficult reminder of, of where they are in the world at this time. And so a blue Christmas or a longest night service can offer a, a little bit of solace, a little bit of of re recognition that in a time that where Jesus came and we're supposed to celebrate um, recognition that what we're feeling is difficult, uh, that we aren't necessarily able to celebrate. And the fact is that Jesus being born into the world was not at that time necessarily seen as a sign of, of celebration. We know that later when the wise men came, which is more like two week, two years after Jesus was born, not 12 days, um, on the, when we celebrate Epiphany on January 6th. Dude's having his breakfast, so please just ignore the kibble sounds there. Um, we know that, like, think about it for Mary and Joseph giving birth to, Mary giving birth to Jesus in a stable. Not the ideal place for a birth. Even if people weren't used to, you know, clean, solid, um, sanitized, um, you know, birthing suites in hospitals. Uh, and a stable is still a stable, um, and you know, at tough times, at a time when there was a census, a time when everybody was in wondering of what's going on and what's with the power play, what's happening politically. This was not a time of gentleness when Jesus was born. It was a time of Roman rule. And so this was not, the, the birth of Jesus itself was not necessarily a moment of great celebration and yeah, this is wonderful and everything's changed. It was very much a breaking into what already was with wonderful, the beauty of a child being born, but also then the questions of how do we take care of this child? What will become of this child? Because we know this child is special. 
the wonders and fears and awes that parents would have. So Christmas, well, for many is a wonderful and joyous time. For many, it is also a very difficult time. And when Jeremy said to us, allow grief to have a seat at the table, what he was inviting us to do was to not pretend, not to, to, to simply assume that because Christmas is wonderful and everybody else has to have a great Christmas, even if my heart is breaking, that means that we all have to suck it up, buttercup, and just be, you know, let everybody else have a great Christmas, even though it's hard for us. The reality is that if there's someone in our family who is grieving, someone for whom Christmas might be a difficult time, that might be bringing grief to the table, chances are they're not the, person, the only person at the table grieving the same thing. Whether it's the death of a loved one, a parent, a child, the loss of a job, the worries about what happens next to our family, all of these things, chances are that it won't be just one person sitting at the Christmas table or around the Christmas tree who is going to be grieving and concerned about these things. And if we are open and honest with ourselves and with others about grief being present, and we indeed let greet grief have a seat at the table, we can name that. And then with grief, with the naming of grief, the acknowledgement that grief is present, we can have compassion as a gift also at the table. We can have love and peace and the acknowledgement that it doesn't have to be perfect, that we can then find joy in the small things. They don't overcome the grief, but they bring moments of release and relief to the grief. It is really important for us, especially in this day and age, that we not, dude, that we not bypass, skip over, ignore or simply bury the grief that we are feeling. If it's in our hearts, then God knows about it. And the best thing we can do, the most faithful thing we can do, is to share it with God and share it with the people that God has placed around us. That together we can walk through the grief. We can discover ways of healing. We can walk on to the next thing, the next day, telling the stories because often when we hide our grief, we also bury the stories. And it's those very stories that bring life. We need to remember those who have gone before us. We need to celebrate who they were. We need to remember the good times when maybe we had a job or things were easier. Because it will also remind us that things can get better in the future. That God has not left us here alone. But that as a matter of fact, God is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. When the child came, born in a manger, God was with us. God is with us as we grieve. So if you have nothing to grieve this winter, this Christmas, and everything is wonderful and joyous, look around you and reach out to somebody who may be grieving. Even if it's just a phone call or a Christmas card or a prayer that they don't even know you offered, Every bit helps. And for those of you who are grieving in some way, shape, or form, for me, it's my family because every year I remember that when I was 16 years old, my grandmother died on Christmas Day. And that has, is difficult to deal with. But at the same time, it's a great gives me great peace because what a gift to know on Christmas Day when Jesus came to us, to know that Jesus came and took my grandmother to be with him. I couldn't ask for more. So if you're grieving, whether it's new grief and raw and massive and overwhelming, or maybe an older grief like mine, something that just you remember and causes a pause, take time to set a place at the table for that grief. Because grief is real. It's a part of who we are. And if we ignore it, it will only get bigger. But if we embrace it, we will find that it gets smaller and smaller and is replaced with joy. So wherever you are in your life, with your families, allow those moments of pause, those moments when grief says, I'm here, let me be. Give grief a seat at the table. Don't be scared of it. Embrace it. Love it. And you will find that your heart grows even greater. Have a good day. Have a blessed day. And may you 
feel the peace of Christ in your hearts this day and evermore. And dude says hi too. God bless everybody. I'll see you tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.